Welcome to another edition of Mic Locker. We've looked at a lot of mics in the last few months since we started this channel. For the most part, I don't like to give opinions on things since my opinion and the opinions of those who work out of this studio tend to vary sometimes wildly. Instead, we try to present clear examples of uses for some of these mics or pit them against their marketplace competitors and allow the viewer to decide what they feel is best for their situation. And honestly, there's no one better to make decisions like that than you. I had an email conversation with someone I consider to be an industry authority when it comes to microphones. He had mentioned to me that he constantly gets asked what the best mic for this or that is and expressed this frustration that people can't seem to understand when he says there is no best for anything. There might be a best sounding for a given situation, but once any of the variables change in the given scenario, the best pick may no longer be the same. We agreed that every mic is a tool and every mic, no matter how cheap, expensive, perceptually bad or good, can work well in a given situation. We're going to be doing an ongoing series of videos that looks at mics for a given purpose. Today's video is on choosing a mic that has the tone you're looking for on snare drum. Depending on the project, be it a jazz trio, metal band, indie funk, or whatever, the sound that you have in your head will hopefully match close enough to one of these, which will make mic selection that much easier come recording time, which in turn will make things easier come mix time. We've selected eight mics to compare, the Shure SM57, the SM57 Transformerless mod, the Shure SM7B, the Audix i5, the Sennheiser 441, the Sennheiser 421, which we've selected the currently available Mark II out of the three variants we have, the Mic Parts STC84 High SPL, and as a tie into last week's video, we're going to try the Sennheiser MKE600 as well. It's rumored that a shotgun mic was used as a snare mic for the Guns N' Roses Appetite for Destruction session, so I'm curious to see how that works out. We're going to first look at tonality with a solo snare drum and single hits, stick and rim shots, and then with brushes. Next, we're going to have a look at rejection by having the snare on the full kit. The idea here is to test the mics to each other so we can compare the rejection relative to each other. In a future video, we'll look at more ideal placement for the snare mics to maximize rejection of each mic for actual recording purposes. This is just to get a loose idea of what each mic might sound like when first placing mics on the kit. During the course of these tests, we're going to compare prices and quick spec sheets of each mic as we feature them. Keep in mind we're only miking the top of the snare drum for these tests. Let's get to it.
All right, so what are your thoughts? Give us a list of eight mics from best to worst, in your opinion. Was one better at one thing, but not something else? Did you have a favorite? Were any of the sounds surprising to you? I know I was a little taken aback by the shotgun mic initially. Please leave me some feedback. Tell me your thoughts while you're at it. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you got anything from this video so we can continue to bring you more videos every week or so. And hit that notify button if you're interested in being notified when we put up a new video. That's it for this time. This is Pags, signing off.